On the Navajo Reservation, we have a saying, water is life. With only 12 to 16 inches of rainfall per year and limited access to running water, many people lack the ability to simply wash their hands, a necessity in today's day. There are over 300 reservations in the US, but one of the most impacted is the Navajo Reservation, along with its neighbor, the Hopi. At one point, the Navajo Nation held the highest infection rate for COVID-19 in the United States. We believe there are many reasons for this, including the fact that somewhere around one in three houses on the Navajo Reservation don't have access to running water. Today, we at Red Feather will be walking you through how to build a DIY hand-washing station, supplying much needed protection for those at risk. We're hoping to slow the spread of COVID-19 and your help goes a long way in achieving this. Welcome to the reservation. There have been more than 450 hand washing stations built for homes on the reservations, and the demand is still growing. Let's get to work. Here are the parts you'll need to build the hand washing station. Feel free to pause or screenshot at any time throughout this tutorial. It's likely you won't have access to exactly the same parts we have. They may vary in size, material, and color, but the overall concept will stay the same. However, make sure that the parts you get match in size. For instance, if you pick up a half-inch bulkhead, you will need a half-inch fitting. Here is a more specific list if you want to follow along as closely as possible with the parts we'll be using. You'll also need access to the following tools listed here. If you're new to this, it might seem intimidating at first, but trust us, everyone is capable of making these hand washing stations. Just follow along and pay close attention. Before we begin, we think it's easier to visualize what we'll be making, so here's what a completed hand washing station will look like. The bulk of the stations are made up of two trash cans. One of the trash cans will hold the unused clean water. This is the reservoir tank. The trash cans are connected by a foot pump, which will pump the water from the reservoir. The water then travels through the plumbing and out the faucet of the second tank. As people wash their hands, the water drains through the sink and collects in the same trash can. This water can then be held and repurposed by draining it through the spigot at the bottom. This function is important as water is rarely used once. And that's a completed hand washing station. We recommend watching this whole tutorial one time through to become comfortable with the building of these hand washing stations. All right, we'll be breaking down this tutorial into five sections, starting with section one, the lid. The lid consists of two main parts. First, the sink, which is where the water will drain, and second, an attachment for the plumbing and faucet. For this section, you'll need the lid of your trash can some container or dishpan to serve as a sink, two half inch bulkheads, and two of the PVC adapters. The first step is to cut out a hole in the lid for the sink to sit inside. Let's begin. Take one of your trash cans in your container, 
Flip the lid of your trash can upside down and place your container so that it sits to one side of the lid. You want to leave room on the lid for the plumbing. Next, pull out a sharpie and draw an outline around the container on the lid. Take out your box cutter and cut along the outline to create a hole in the lid for your sink. Once you're finished, flip the lid right side up and make any adjustments as needed until the container fits snugly into the lid. Nice job! Next, we will be cutting two holes. One inside the sink to provide draining and the second three to four inches above where the sink now sits. The upper hole will be used for the plumbing and faucet. We will be placing our plastic half inch bulkheads into both the holes. In order to cut the holes, we will need to use a power drill, along with the hole saw that is the correct size for the bulkheads. The hole saw should fit comfortably over the screw of the bulkheads. Use the power drill to make a hole in the center of the sink and above the sink of the trash can on the lid. Next, we'll be attaching the bulkheads to both holes. Start by unscrewing the nut of each bulkhead and fit the screw into each of the holes. Then, screw the nut of the bulkhead back onto the screw until snug. Sometimes it's easier to flip the white sink or lid over to screw the nut on. Next, we'll be putting two PVC adapters into the bulkhead that is on the lid of the trash can. One will be screwed into the top and the other into the bottom of the bulkhead, which is hidden right now. On each of the PVC adapters, we will use plumber's tape to create a seal. Wrap the tape around each adapter a few times until the threads are covered. Once plumber's taped, screw in one adapter to the top of the bulkhead and one to the bottom. And that completes section one of the tutorial. If you like a challenge, good for you. Section two is the hardest of them all. Section two, the plumbing. Now we will create and connect the plumbing to the PVC adapters we just screwed in. The plumbing consists of three main parts, the PVC pipes, the PVC elbows, and the PVC check valve. Here are the lengths of the PVC pipes we'll need to cut. The top faucet will consist of a 12 inch pipe and a 6 to 8 inch pipe. The 6 to 8 inch pipe can differ in length, but the goal is to have the faucet draining directly over the sink. The bottom half of the plumbing will consist of a 13 inch pipe, an 8 inch pipe, and a 1 to 3 inch pipe. The 1 to 3 inch pipe may differ in length based on the size of your trash can. This will be the last piece we cut, so hold off on that piece. More on this later. Now let's cut some pipe. Use a tape measure and a sharpie to measure out the different lengths needed before cutting. Use a PVC cutter to cut each of the pipes according to their sizes. Just a heads up, once we are happy with how our plumbing is built, we will be gluing the PVC pipes at the end. So don't put the pieces together too tightly, they will need to come apart. For the top half, place the 12 inch pipe into the adapter followed by the elbow piece facing the sink. 
then the six to eight inch pipe and another elbow down towards the sink. For the lower half, flip the lid over to reach the bottom PVC adapter. Add the 13 inch pipe and an elbow facing the sink. Add the eight inch pipe followed by the valve, making sure to attach the valve in the correct direction. Now, about that valve. The valve only allows water to flow in one direction. On the valve, the flow of water is indicated by an arrow, a ridiculously small arrow. We recommend outlining the arrow to avoid confusion. The arrow must point into the PVC pipe so that the water will flow through the plumbing and out the faucet. Again, face the valve so that the arrow is pointing into the 8 inch PVC pipe. The last step is to add the small 1 to 3 inch pipe to the other end of the check valve. This will allow us to connect the plumbing to the trash can. But before doing this, go ahead and flip your plumbing around and place it into the trash can so that it's sitting right side up. You notice there's a space in between the check valve and the edge of the trash can. The amount of space will differ based on the size of trash can being used. With all that being said, we still don't want to measure and cut the small piece of PVC pipe just yet because we will be installing another bulkhead in this area that will change our measurement. So we will actually have to move on to our next section and then we'll come back. Just trust us, you're doing great so far. That brings us to section three, bulkheads and fittings. We'll be adding two half inch bulkheads along with their fittings to the trash can. One close to the center and one at the bottom left. Let's take a closer look. The bulkhead on top will need to align with the plumbing, while the bulkhead at the bottom will simply just drain the used water. In the upper bulkhead, we will place a half inch barb adapter matching the size of the half inch bulkhead union. On the inside of this bulkhead, we will attach another PVC pipe adapter that is hidden as of now. On the bottom bulkhead, we will attach a half inch spigot. To begin, we will need to align the upper bulkhead to the plumbing. Start with the plumbing inside the trash can. Actually, let's back up real quick. This is the moment where you will want to position the lid and plumbing how you want it. If your trash can does not have wheels, the step doesn't really matter. But depending on where you position your lid in plumbing, the wheels will either be in front, on the sides, or in the back. Nothing will change about the functionality of the system, it's just about preference, and once we cut the hole, there's no going back. Okay, let's resume. Place your plumbing into the trash can and eyeball the point where the plumbing, specifically the valve, meets the trash can. Make a mark where it meets on the outside of the can. Some perfectionists will measure, but ballparking the alignment will do just fine. We'll be cutting a hole at this mark for the upper bulkhead to fit into. To create the hole, use the power drill and correct hole saw to cut the hole. We find it easier to place the trash can on its side and then drill the hole at the marked location. Now grab the all surface glue and glue a ring around the outside of the hole. We always feel more is better, but don't get crazy. Grab the bulkhead and unscrew the nut. Place the screw inside the hole with glue. You'll then screw in the nut from underneath. This may require two people. Next, we'll be adding the barb adapter to the outside of the bulkhead and the PVC adapter to the inside of the bulkhead. Before attaching, plumbers tape both parts. Screw the barb adapter into the outside of the bulkhead until snug and facing down. Then on the inside of the same bulkhead, screw in the white PVC adapter. 
Next, we'll drill a hole and repeat the process for the bulkhead at the bottom. Try to drill as low as possible into the left of the previous bulkhead, while still drilling into a flat portion of the trash can. As done with the previous bulkhead, glue another ring around the hole and attach the bulkhead screw. Then screw in the nut on the inside. We'll be attaching the half inch spigot to the outside of the bulkhead. This will allow storage and use of water collected by the hand washing station. Plumbers tape the spigot and screw it into the bulkhead until facing out the back of the can. Now that we're done with the bulkheads and fittings, we need to go back and attach the plumbing to the upper bulkhead. Here's what it will look like when it's finished. We have the check valve and the PVC adapter connected by the small 1 to 3 inch PVC pipe. Cut the size of PVC pipe needed to connect the two and connect the valve to the adapter. Once finished and happy with the plumbing, it's time to glue all the PVC pipes together. You'll add PVC glue to the inside of the female connectors. You'll also add glue to the outside of the PVC pipe before connecting the two. When all glued up, fit the parts nice and snug together. When gluing the PVC pipes to the PVC adapters, do not unscrew the adapters. We recommend going one piece at a time to keep everything straight. And that should do it. The first trash can is completed. Luckily, the second can is far less complicated. Section 4, the reservoir tank. For the reservoir trash can, we're simply adding a bulkhead and one barb adapter to the bottom of the can. This is where the clean water will be pumped from. Grab your second trash can and just as done with the previous bulkhead, drill a hole at the bottom on a flat surface. We are adding our hole on the opposite side from the wheels of the trash can. Add a ring of glue around the hole. Put in the bulkhead screw and screw in the nut from the inside of the trash can. This process is very similar to the other bulkheads. Take the second barb adapter, apply plumber's tape, and screw it into the outside of the bulkhead until it fits snug and facing left. And ba-bam, the second trash can is done. Which brings us to the final section, which is section five, connecting the tanks. We'll be connecting the reservoir tank to the other trash can through a foot pump and some tubing. Let's get a better look at how this is done from the side. We'll have three parts, the foot pump to pump the water, the tubing to carry the water, and four clamps to keep everything in place. Grab the pump and four clamps. We'll need to cut two pieces of tubing as well. The length of the tubing depends on how far apart you want your tanks. We are going to cut a one and a half and two foot piece of tubing, which means the tanks will be close to each other when finished. Use a PVC cutter to cut your desired length of tube. Attach each piece of tubing to the pump connectors. We connect the one and a half foot piece to the connector on the right and the two foot piece to the connector on the left. Then slide two clamps onto each of the tubes. Before connecting this system to the tanks, you will need to make sure that your pump is facing the right way. For this pump, we will point the two connectors in white directly at the trash cans, 
with the reservoir tank on the right and the hand washing tank on the left. The tubing on the left will be connected to the hand washing trash can on the left. while the tubing on the right will be connected to the reservoir tank on the right. Make sure the tubing fits snugly around each barb adapter. Lastly, we will clamp the tubing to the each of the connectors, creating a tight seal. Use a screwdriver or bit driver to tighten the clamps firmly over the center of each connector. Finally, for safety, label the cans not for drinking. At last, our hand washing station is complete. Feel free to add any customization. Now, let's put these to the test. Thanks for doing your part to help. For more information, visit redfeather.org.